I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying the Miss Freelancer, and we're starting right after this intro. Hello, how can Miss help you today? Systems on. Special thanks to all the support from patrons and channel members. It takes a while to make one of these, and your support is appreciated. Welcome to a Star Citizens Buyer's Guide. What's up, citizens? This is Subliminal here, and today we'll be discussing the features, functions, and benefits of the Miss Freelancer. And we'll compare those features amongst competing ships so you can make an informed buying decision. Well, actually, for now, we have it for free. Anyway, in this review, I'll cover a brief overview, take a tour, compare stats, review pros and cons, and give you my thoughts on the Freelancer. If you haven't seen it already, after this review, check out my loadout guide for the Miss Freelancer in the info card above and on the end screen. I'm live on Twitch right now, so come and hang. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. The Freelancer is a multi-role transport spacecraft developed by MISC and was the first vessel to be constructed as part of the unique Lend-Lease Agreement with the Xi'an government. Initially marketed as an efficient long-haul merchant ship for private enterprises, the Freelancer quickly became the ship of choice for dedicated explorers. Musashi Industrial and Starflight Concern, or MISC for short, is a spacecraft manufactured headquartered in the Fujin city on Saisei. Founded in 2805 after a merger between Hado Electronics Corporation and the Musashi Lifestyle Design Unit spinoff of Acorn Limited, MISC primarily focuses on transport and industrial utility spacecraft such as the Freelancer and the Starfarer but has also been expanded into the racing market with the Razor. The ship's hull is sold in several variants that have been adapted for various alternate roles like the Freelancer Dur Exploration Ship, the Freelancer Max Enhanced Cargo Ship, and the Freelancer MISC Carrier-Based Missile Boat. As of today, the Freelancer is available for sale and upgrade on the Pledge Store for $110 and is available in the Freelancer Game Packets for $125. It is currently available as a temporary loaner for everyone due to a few bugs. It is also available to Hull A and B, Mercury Star Runner, and Vulcan owners. The Freelancer is available for sale at Lorville's New Deal for almost $1.7 million off of UEC, and it is available for rent at Area 18 and Lorville's rental stations. Now that you know a little bit more about the Freelancer, let's take a tour. If you'd like to skip this tour, the timestamp is on screen and in the description. The paint you're seeing is the stock paint, or I guess in this case, lack of paint. Storm Surge and Black are also available. Although I actually have the Black equipped right now, but I'm currently experiencing a bug. Let me know in the comments if you are too. Up front we have the Daft Punk helmet style look for the Freelancer's nose. This is a thruster, you'll see these around. Above the landing gear, we have the side entrance. Here we have a huge proprietary dual size 3 turret found on the Freelancer series. This one is equipped with two size 3 ballistic cannons. Up here on the main engines, we have what looks like a speaker diaphragm, but I think it's a retro thruster. Moving forward towards the rear, under each wing we have a size 4 missile rack and a size 3 missile rack, each holding two missiles. Around the rear, we have its dual main thrusters. In concept, these actually rotated down to be used as VTOL thrusters like the Cutlass Black, but I think they nixed that idea. Oh, almost forgot, up here is the rear man turret. Also around the rear, we have the entrance to the cargo hold. The starboard side is identical to the port side. I was going to give you one last look, but then this happened and I couldn't leave it out. Let's head inside. Through the cargo bay doors, we have the rear man turret. This turret has four MFDs and a 2D radar. I'm not a big fan of its view. Heading back down, on the starboard side we have Radar 1, Shield 1, Avionics 1, Radar 2, and Power 1. On the port side we have the Quantum Drive, both coolers, Avionics 2, Shield 2, and Life Support. This cargo hold is big enough to fit 54 of the 66 SCU. A Tumbro Cyclone will also fit, but it's a tight fit. Anything smaller will fit with ease. 
Continuing on, we have another room that holds the remaining 12 SCU of cargo and the docking collar. Next, we have the living quarters. On the port side, we have what looks like a food processor and a beverage maker. Next is the airlock and the side entrance we saw earlier. Turning around on the starboard side, we have a non-functional workstation. To our right, we have a head. It has a shower, sink, and a space shitter, but I haven't been able to extend it. Heading towards the flight deck, we have four beds. Fun fact, these are also the freelancers' escape pods. Entering into the flight deck, we have four seats. In the rear, on the port and starboard side, we have engineering stations that each have one functional MFD. Let's skip to the co-pilot seat. The co-pilot seat has a couple of terribly placed MFDs unless you have head tracking and a few well-placed ones. Let's check out the pilot seat. Pilot seat has a pretty similar setup except the middle MFD is replaced with the HUD and radar. The Freelancer series does not have the new building blocks you ride. There are no ejection seats in the flight deck. Now that we've taken a tour, let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I've selected 10 ships, all the Freelancer variants, some competitors, and some light cargo ships. The Google Sheet document with the data is linked in the description. The Miss Freelancer weighs in at almost 210,000 kilograms and takes fifth place. It fits in at 38 meters in length and ties in sixth place with the rest of the Freelancers. It totes 66 SCU of cargo and takes third place. It has a max true size of five and ties in first place with the Freelancers and Andromeda. It carries 2,500 quantum fuel units and ties in third place. It cruises by with an SCM speed of 154 meters per second and ties in sixth place. It strolls by gingerly with a max speed of 1,005 meters per second and ties in sixth place again. It has a maximum pitch rate of 47 degrees per second and ties in sixth place again and again. It has a maximum yaw rate of 47 degrees per second as well and ties in fifth place. And it has a maximum roll rate of 74 degrees per second and ties in sixth place. It has a total HP of just over 19,000 and takes fourth place. It blasts its way in with a default pilot DPS of 1568 and takes fourth place. It shoots through the enemy with a turret DPS of 916 and ties in third place. It has a decent combined missile payload of almost 32,000 and takes sixth place. And the Freelancer is available for sale in game for almost 1.7 million alpha UVC and takes the sixth spot. It's important to take notice that compared to the starter cargo ships, the Freelancer is pretty slow. However, if we were to compare it among ships of its size, you would see it's actually pretty nimble. This video is brought to you by my Locations of Stand and Fan Art series. There are four ways you can rock this collection. All viewers can download the mobile wallpapers for free. Desktop wallpaper versions are available to all patrons and channel members. Canvases and posters are available in the merch store, and you can have them printed on metal from Display. Flaunt your love for Star Citizen and support the channel while doing so. All right, let's weigh some of the pros and cons. I would say its pros are, as far as metrics are concerned, 66 SEU of space is great for an intermediate trader, perfect for maximizing illegal vice trade runs. It has plenty of room for players. It has a very large quantum fuel tank that if paired with the fastest size two drive can still make a trip from one end of stand to the other without needing to refuel. It has a decent amount of hull HP, Having four always gimbaled size 3 hardpoints is a lot of firepower. The missile payload compared to light cargo ships is great. Now for some things that we can't see on paper. It has room for some passengers, mission boxes, SCU, and land vehicles all at the same time. I'm running out of room here and I'm not going to edit this template, so you're going to have to listen up. It has amenities like beds to log out in, a toilet, a shower, sink, food processor. It's purposely built for long range. It has a manned turret, great for experiencing multi-crew gameplay. When degradation comes in, having all the components in one location makes for easy repairs. And if you're considering this over a Cuddy Black, the Freelancer has two shield generators where the Cuddy only has one. For cons, I'd say its SEM speed and max speed are pretty slow. It can be pretty hard to stop as well. 
Its view from the turret could be better. It has a blind spot on top and straight ahead. And a very common complaint is that the view from the cockpit is not very good. So what are my thoughts? I think the Freelancer is the best medium-sized multi-role ship we have. It excels at everything, PvE combat, multi-crew gameplay, long-distance journeys, and taking land vehicles planetside. Its only con is its speed, and considering its Star Citizen's equivalent of a semi-truck, this is to be expected. What I really like about the Freelancer is its ability to excel at almost everything you can do in Star Citizen except mining. If you are new or an intermediate player, you should be using this as your primary ship. If you're looking to upgrade to this ship over the Cutlass, the choice isn't that simple. Both ships are great. When it comes down to it, do you want the nimbleness of the Cutlass or the tankiness of the Freelancer? Either way, you can't make a bad choice. Well, the Freelancer is free right now, so there's no need to buy one at the moment. If I had to guess, after 3.10 goes stable, we'll see this loner fade. If you're watching this after that, I prefer the Freelancer over the Cutlass, but that's just my opinion. Those are my thoughts, let me hear yours down in the comments. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my loadout guide for the Freelancer here. I'm live on Twitch right now, so come and hang. If you enjoy my channel, there are five ways to support it. Number one, you can smash that like button. Number two, you can share this content with someone who may enjoy it. Number three, you can check out my locations of standing collection over at Displate and in the merch store. You can subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the circle here. And number five, if you're feeling generous, consider becoming a channel member or even better, a patron. Some pledge perks can be seen here, including desktop versions of my locations of standing collection available to all patrons and channel members. If not, just sticking around until the end is greatly appreciated. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.